In our fast-paced world, finding connection and strength in nature becomes increasingly important. Earth Chi, the energy emanating from the Earth, offers profound insights into this connection. Although specific geographic location empower individuals to thrive, focusing on the practice of grounding exercises significantly helps cultivating Earth Chi. Earth Chi varies across landscapes. From mountain valleys, teeming with vitality to coastal regions, echoing with the rhythmic pulse of the ocean. Even within urban jungles, green spaces serve as sanctuaries of tranquility. These environments offer opportunities for grounding exercises, fostering a deeper connection to Earth Chi. Through grounding practices, such as Bagwan Angun Circle Walking, individuals can actively engage with Earth Chi. By centering ourselves and harmonizing with our surroundings, we tap into the restorative power of nature, fostering resilience and well-being. Earth Chi reminds us of our profound connection to the natural world. By practicing ground exercises, we can cultivate vitality and strength, regardless of our geographic location. In this video, I will guide you through exercises aimed at developing Earth Chi. By lowering the Chi, fostering a deeper connection to Earth and enhancing overall well-being. Self-discovery and transformation as we harness the energy of Earth thrives the body, mind and spirit. Generally, Qigong exercises should be treated more likely as a technology rather than beliefs, because the practice itself is very concrete and one can achieve predicted results by following those simple rules driving the exercises. There are many parts of our body preventing qi uh, from lowering down below the earth. Uh, one of the major uh, tension points is our shoulders. So first we need to relax the shoulders, then drop the elbows. These are the very traditional principles behind internal practices of Chinese qigong or internal martial arts. You can slightly hit your hands to enhance relaxation. Generally, this is known as loosening the upper body. Once you've managed to relax shoulders, drop the elbows and generally like go down with your relaxation, you then may start this exercise combining uh, all the techniques all together. Next big point of tension is your hips. One of the most common mistakes is putting your tailbone outside the way I now demonstrate. This is generally a very bad habit. It makes your shoulders tensed, makes you feel pain in your lower back, leave alone the knees that cannot bend anymore. What you should do instead is to sit on your tailbone. You need to bend your tailbone a bit forwards, like this. And once this is done, you would suddenly feel that your lower back is relaxed and now you can rotate your tailbone into one or another direction. Rotating your tailbone is not necessarily needed, it's only serving the purpose to show that the lower back is completely relaxed. This should work regardless whether you stand on two legs or only on one leg. Once you've managed to put your tailbone into proper position, you may then start expanding your hips. Essentially, you need to invoke the inner motion that is generated within your hips and Y spreads to the sides. The extreme point of this expansion would be the position where you sit down to the very ground. Unlikely those common ways to sit down you may encounter in fitness or any other physical exercising. The purpose of this exercise is not to put your body into tension but instead to release the inner tension. There are some acupuncture points in the inner part of your knees and the force should go outwards from that point. Also you need to make sure that the knees are not going beyond the toes. Now we can combine the relaxation of shoulders and hips. I'm currently doing this on the left side so my cheek gets relaxed and then the flow goes just right into my leg. And again, starting with the shoulder and then naturally flowing down to back, and another shoulder, and again flowing via the hip to the knee and to the very foot. It's like a drainage, really.
Once you feel comfortable relaxing your body part sequentially, you may then try to connect everything together into a single exercise. Same exercise, but now I have my feet together and the side view hopefully shows you how things work a bit better. We are now coming to what is known as an empty step. So this loosening exercise is the very basics for stepping with your legs. It's quite important to turn your hip the way, similarly to how you turn the shoulder in order to relax it. And when you step forward using the so-called empty step, this shows up quite nicely. If I can properly turn my hip, this allows me to walk very smoothly and the overall direction of energy flow within my body is directed downwards. This results in full body relaxation and working out those meridians located in legs. This is the ultimate principle behind not only regenerating the body physically, but also recovering psychologically and getting refreshed mentally. I'm currently showing the trajectory of how, in particular, the chi flow should go when you are considering an empty step. This does not necessarily mean that you need to repeat this exact arm movements I'm making, but these arm movements are intended to show the proper emphasis of how to move that you should bear in mind. Once you are done with stepping on the straight line, you may then try to apply this loosening techniques during circle walking. Here I'm doing uh, the very basic Tanibu, also known as Bhagavajan step, but at the same time I'm relaxing my hips and directing the flow of my chi through the legs. Arm movements are only serving the purpose of directing chi. Traditionally, we just put hands down and not moving them at all, as has been demonstrated in the very beginning of this video. But in a work does not mean that you stay in one single posture or even move in one single posture. It means that within that posture, you need to invoke the inner flow of chi. And I'm using my hands in order to demonstrate how exactly the trajectory behind that flow would lie within my body. And now this same exact exercise, but being performed on a circle. Finally, when you go down with dynamic aspects of these exercises and you feel that chi already flows within inside your body, you may then try moving in a static posture meanwhile directing the chi internally using only your intention. It's like a pulse, like a heartbeat. Every single step I make, this loosening movement is occurring within. You may still slightly wave your hands, just with an idea of a better relaxation. Don't try to feel anything. Listen to your body and discover what happens within.